Our next set of problems that we're going to look at is operations with decimals. This is problem 17 through 22 of the final review. Reminder, you must do these by hand. No calculators allowed. First thing we're going to start with is converting a decimal to a fraction. We want to put the decimal as the numerator. So 52 will go on top. For the denominator, we want to put the column value of the rightmost column. This is in the hundredths column. Remember that to do this, we're going to follow 1 by the number of zeros equal to the number of decimal places. We have two decimal places, so I'm going to add two zeros. All right, we want to simplify. 52 and 100 are both divisible by 2. If we divide 52 by 2, we get 26. 100 divided by 2 is 50. We're not done. We can also divide 26 by 2 and 50 by 2. And if we do that, we end up with 13 over 25. 13 over 25 will be our final answer. Okay, let's look at some addition and subtraction problems. Remember that when we do addition and subtraction of decimals, we want to line up our columns and our decimal points vertically. I'm going to go ahead and put my larger number on top. And my smaller number on the bottom. We want to treat the decimal point as an anchor, so when I do this, it should be 0 0.9. Nine, three. With our decimal points as our anchors, those should be lined up. If your decimal points are lined up, then everything else is lined up. If you want, you can add a zero so that everything has the same number of decimal places. And now if we add straight down, starting on the right, we get five, three, nine, and four. We bring down our decimal point, and so we get 4.935. All right, let's look at a subtraction problem. Same thing, I want to line up my columns and my decimal points. Now, 17 has no decimal point, so our decimal point is actually right after the 7. I'm going to line up my 5 under my 7. So we get something that looks like this right now. Now for addition, the zeros you can add if you want. For subtraction, if we have decimal places missing on the top number, we do have to add them in. So I have to add in the zeros here. We are subtracting, which means that we want to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from the 7 and make it a 6 which makes my first zero a 10. I borrow from the 10, it becomes a nine, which makes my last zero a 10. Now, if we go ahead and subtract, we get 10 minus seven is three. Nine minus two is seven. Six minus five is one. And we bring down our last one. We bring down our decimal point, and we get 11.73. For my multiplication problem, I'm going to put my larger number on top. We want to multiply disregarding the decimal points for now. 
So whether you put your decimal points in the number or not, it doesn't matter. Put my 73 on the bottom. And we multiply. 3 times 8 is 24. We carry the 2. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. 3 times 6 is, or 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. All right, let's repeat for 7. 7 times 8 is 56. We carry the 5. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 5 is 47. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 4 is 18. We go ahead and add, we get 4. 6, 15, carry the 1, 1 plus 8 is 9, and 1. Okay, so that takes care of our multiplication step, so now we want to figure out where our decimal point goes. So remember that to figure out where the decimal point goes, we're going to figure out how many total number of decimal places do we have in our problem. We've got two in our first one, two in our second one. That makes a total of four. So now where do I put my decimal point so that I have four total decimal places? We're going to put it between the one and the nine. OK, so that's our multiplication problem. Next thing we want to look at is a division problem. So remember that in order to divide decimals, the first thing we're going to do is we want to move our decimal place, move our decimal point, so that we are dividing by a whole number. Meaning my second number, I want to move this decimal point so that it's not 0.3, but just a 3. That's going to go outside. We want to do the same thing to the first one. So my first number is going to be 37.8. We want to divide. We're going to line up our answer with the rightmost digit we are working with. So the first number that 3 divides into is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, we get 0 we bring down our 7. 3 goes into 7 two times. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract, we get 1. Bring down our 8. 3 goes into 18 six times. And 6 times 3 is 18. We don't have to add any zeros because we did get that it divides evenly. Last step, we want to move our decimal point straight up into our answer, and so we get 12.6. Okay, last one. We want to convert a fraction to a decimal. Another thing that we want to pay attention to is we want to round to the nearest hundredth. So remember that when we divide, what number goes inside? We put the 5 inside. We always put the top number inside. And the bottom number always goes outside. I'm going to add a decimal point and I'm going to add my zeros. 
So two zeros, that gives me two hundredth. But remember that we want one more so that we can determine whether it rounds up or down. All right, so we are ready to divide now. 12 goes into 50 four times. Remember to line up your answer with the rightmost digit that you're working with. 4 times 12 is 48. Subtract, we get 2. We bring down a 0. 12 goes into 20 one time. We get 12. Subtract, we get 20 minus 12 is 8. And 12 goes into 80. I believe it goes in 6 times. Let's check it. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. I can do 80 minus 72, so we're good there. And I get that my remainder is smaller than the 12, so we're good there. So the answer was 6. All right, we move our decimal point straight up into our answer. And then we want to round this. So 0.416, my 1 is in my hundredths column. My 6 tells me to round up. And so this is going to be 0.42. All right, that takes care of our decimal review. The next thing that we will be looking at is proportions and percent.